Okay, so here we have a quick demonstration of something called the motor effect, uh, which you probably haven't seen before. The motor effect is what makes electric motors work, but it's simpler than that. An electric motor is quite complicated, but the motor effect is less complicated. Uh, what it involves is um, a current carrying wire moving if it's in a magnetic field. So what we have here is um, a power supply, in this case some cells, um, connected up through a couple of wires to this system here, which is basically um, a couple of bits of metal rod that form a complete circuit via this black wire back to the cells. So current is going to flow uh, through this wire here, across this rod, which is free to move, and then back around the circuit. So the, the rod is going to be carrying an electric current. Then over here, we have our magnet. Um, it's definitely a magnet, it's quite a strong one. It can uh, pick up a load of paper clips, which it's just done. This is going to be providing a magnetic field. And hopefully I've labelled these field lines correctly. The field lines are labelled going from north to south. Now, at the moment, no current is flowing uh, in the circuit and no current is flowing through that metal rod so nothing interesting is happening but if I close the switch if I move the switch into view here if I close the switch then current is going to flow in the circuit uh, and the rod might well experience a force there it goes so the rod experienced a force which pushed it into the magnet I'll show you that again so when I close the switch and the current flows through the rod it experiences a force and it moves. Um, you need to know the factors that will affect the force the rod experiences uh, and also how to predict which way it moves. So um, hopefully it makes sense to you that the more current, the greater the force. I'll try a lower current and see if it, it moves less impressively. Mm, still quite impressive. Try lower current still. Oh, okay, so here we go. We've got a lower current and this isn't actually sufficient to get the rod moving. If I give it a little nudge, oh, not enough, okay? So a lower current doesn't give us as much force. Um, the other thing we could change is the strength of the magnetic field, um, but I don't have another magnet suitable for this demonstration. So that's that. Now the other thing you need to know is how to work out the direction of the force and for this you need to use Fleming's left hand rule which uh, I would recommend taking a minute to look in the textbook and read about. For Fleming's left hand rule you need your left hand not your right hand and you need to get it in this funny position here where your thumb, your first finger and your second finger are all at right angles to each other. It takes a bit of practice. Okay, now. Your first finger points in the direction of, you see that F, the field, the magnetic field lines from north to south. Your second finger points in the direction of current, which is technically I, okay, but because second finger has a C in it, and the word current has a C in it, begins with C. Let's just call that C for current. So current that way, field that way. Now this current is conventional current, that is imaginary current that flows from positive to negative. Okay, so we've got uh, first finger field, second finger current, then your thumb, uh, people often call it thrust. Just to avoid using the F, so we'll call that T for thrust. So if you orient your fingers uh, correctly, your thumb will tell you the direction of the thrust. Now let's check this for our setup we had here. Okay, uh, it takes a bit of practice this, but you'll sort it out. Um, so first finger field, the field, I'm gonna zoom out a bit if I can, this might be wobbly. The field is pointing downwards. We've labeled that, okay. Uh, second finger, current. Conventional current flows from positive to negative. Now I've got the positive, Let's go back to a decent current. Positive is coming in this side, 
and so conventional current is going to flow across the rod that way. So first finger field downwards, second finger current that way. That means my thumb thrust, I'll really zoom out now, is pointing that way into the magnet. Okay, you can't even see my whole hand here. So first finger field downwards, second finger current that way, thumb thrust that way into the magnet. So the, the, the rod is going to be forced into the magnet and that's what happens. Okay. You can reverse the force by reversing any of those things. Easiest for me is to reverse the field just by taking this out and turning it upside down. Now, first finger field is upwards. Second finger current is in the same direction that way. So first finger field upwards, second finger current that way. Now the thrust is going to be outwards. And if I make the current flow, there it goes. It kind of went outwards and fell off. We'll do that one more time. Here we go. There we go. Forced outwards. It takes a bit of practice, this, uh, the left hand rule, especially because the questions in your exam are in two dimensions. They're obviously printed on paper, which is two dimensional. So uh, it's hard enough as it is doing it in three dimensions, but then when you have to interpret a two dimensional diagram and, and work out what's going on, it, it's even harder. But with a bit of practice, you'll get the hang of it, uh, and hopefully that's given you a decent introduction.